I was having severe pain after I would eat, I don't know, 20 minutes after it'd just be excruciating. And I have a very high tolerance for pain, so I thought, you know, maybe it was something with my diet, something wasn't sitting right. Um, I obviously paid attention to it and tried switching things around, and it never really happened, or it never really fixed it. I went to a doctor, started happening in the fall of 2014. Um, I went to a doctor in November, and they said that I had an ulcer because of the pain where it was at and I was eating. So he put me on medication and changed away from caffeine, spicy foods, things like that. Um, and that didn't help. <laughs> so I ended up just living with it, I guess. Um, and then it started getting severely worse. Um, I was bald over in pain one night crying and my husband, this is in December of 2014, and my husband's like, you need to go to the ER, you need to go to the ER, this isn't like you. So I went and they brushed it off, like, why are you here for abdominal pain? Um, ended up doing uh, ultrasound and found out that I had an gallbladder, so they thought that was the issue. Gave me a surgeon's number and told me to take Tylenol and contact the surgeon. So that's how this whole thing kind of started. I don't know. I'm I'm a type one diabetic, so I try to pay attention to attention to patterns and stuff because of my blood sugars. And then I also had two younger, I had two boys. They were three and one at the time, so it wasn't really like the forefront of my issues. Um, I was I was just trying to alleviate it on myself or by myself. My call in contact with the surgeon. They ended up having me have my gallbladder removed because, like I said, I'm a type one diabetic, and I think there is a few potential issues with having an inflamed gallbladder um, that they wanted to take care of so it didn't turn into something more serious. So I had my gallbladder removed. It was in January of 2015. I was still having this pain but not as bad so I thought maybe this is part of the healing process um, and this had happened. It was still painful into March and I had started asking other people who had their gallbladder removed. I said, was it still painful for you? How long did it take for this pain to go away? And they, everyone I asked was kind of like, what? You shouldn't be having pain anymore. And I made an appointment with a local GI. Um, I think it's relevant to say that my mom also had colon cancer at 44. So I went to go see her doctor that she had. Um, it took me a month to get in, and my appointment was set for the end of June of 2015 for CDI. Um, I ended up, I could tolerate this pain at this point. So I, I ended up actually canceling that appointment, moving it for a month because I could tolerate it. I could still function, um, pressing matters with boys, my two boys, and things were going on in life. Um, so I just blew it off for a little bit. Finally, it was just like sharp. Like it felt like someone was like kind of stabbing me in the stomach, like sharp, very sharp. And it would only last for so long. And I felt that I could tolerate it for that amount of time. Um, I don't know. I, that's pretty much what it was. Just this pain, all this constant pain. Um, and then being tired, it, it could, I don't know. Looking back on it, I shouldn't have read it up, written it off, but I did. Um, I wasn't having any, any any other symptoms like I've heard a lot of people. I wasn't having any change in bowel movements or um, any blood rectal bleeding. I wasn't having any of that. So it was I was trying to figure out what it was on my own, I guess. And to this appointment, I we ended up having to see the MP because I canceled the first appointment with the doctor. So um, I went in, I was describing what was happening. Um, she said that because I was a type 1 diabetic, um, autoimmune issues tend to run in packs, so it could be another autoimmune issue. Um, and then she also said that she's going to send me for a CT scan because I had mentioned that my mom had colon cancer at 44. And she I said, what are you going to do a CT scan for? And she said that she wanted to check for colon cancer. And I said, 29, I don't have colon cancer. And she kind of shot me down and was, she was going to schedule it anyway. <laughs> 
Um, so that was in the end of July of 2015. I had my CT scan August 12th of the following month and it was 45 minutes away and before I even could get home, my GI's office was calling me saying that they needed to schedule an emergency or emergency colonoscopy. I'm not a person who gets worked up about a lot of things. So I figure like, okay, well, at least they're coming um, some kind of conclusion because I've been living with this for a while now. Um, answer was still not, not registering in my head whatsoever. Um, I was thinking, oh, hey, a monoclonoscopy, maybe it's something, an autoimmune issue because the CT tech who did my scan before, before I had left had asked me if there was any IBS that ran in my family. But afterwards, they pulled me out of the operating room and obviously woke me up. Um, they didn't really say much until I had come to, and my husband was right next to me. Um, and the doctor comes around and she says, we found a mass. Um, we couldn't finish the colonoscopy. She said she wasn't sure what it was. But she sent a biopsy stat that it should be returned in two days. The mass had grown outside of the colon walls at that point, so that's why I don't think that they could get through to finish my colonoscopy. So we weren't sure about the staging. Um, after the CT came back from later on that day, we had a good idea that it hadn't yet spread, um, at least into a different organ. So that was a positive <laughs> aspect in the whole scheme of things that day. Um, she sent the biopsy, she took a biopsy of the mass and she sent it out and it would be back in two days to let us know what exactly it was. My husband and I went home and we waited. <laughs> that was a very long Tuesday because the result ended up coming in the Wednesday. So. I tried to keep myself busy, keep it together for my boys, knowing potentially what was in my future. Wednesday comes around, um, my doctor's office calls me in the morning. My husband had went to work at this point because we weren't sure how we were going to get the news of what it was. And they say to me, um, we need you to get someone who you can trust to come with you to the surgical center as soon as possible. And that's all I said. So I was a little crazy at this point trying to just my I had my boys at home just trying to keep it together until I could at least get them somewhere and then I get a hold of my husband to get him to come home so we could go to this, this meeting I guess we got to the surgical center they ushered us into a very small conference room and we sat down the doctor was not in yet and we just we had no words we, di we didn't know what to say at this point um my doctor came in and she looked at us and she says, I have never had to tell anyone as young as you are, but it's cancer. She goes, typically my patients are 70 and older that I have to tell this to, but you have colon cancer. I remember a tear coming down on the side of my cheek and I looked over at my husband and he was crying. And then at that point I'm like, okay, gotta get it together. What do we do next? So that, that was how we found out. I mean, I didn't know anyone who would even remotely come close to dealing with colon cancer my age. Even my mom was 44 and I wasn't even supposed to have a colonoscopy until 30, 34. So I just, it was just, okay, so this is the news. And then I let myself have a moment and then I'm like, okay, what are the plans? My medical team was wonderful. They they had gotten me to have a CT scan that day just to see if they could see anything had spread or not, and that came back clear at that point. So then they figured that I was just going to go straight to surgery um, for as far as treatment goes. Um, they set me up to see a surgeon that day. We left the Surgical Institute to go to my new surgeon's office. We saw her, she looked at my chart, she looked at everything, and she said, you know, I think we can do this with just surgery alone. So we're in this exam room, and I told my husband, I'm like, I need you to call my family, and I need you to tell them, because I can't, I can't right now. Um, it was just, I was strong and motivated to get everything taken care of, but I just wasn't ready to deal with it on a whole another emotional level. So he made the phone call, and he let them know, 
um, he answered their questions as best as he could. But it was, um, that was one of the harder things to do. Um, my mom and my sisters live around here and um, I called my mom after my appointment and spoke to her and then she let my sisters know, but I was not ready to deal with it on an extended family level at that point. <laughs> So thankfully, my husband took care of that for me. Well, you know, on top of cancer with Lynch, I've had a few other scares for other cancers, and anxiety is very hard to deal with sometimes. Um, I find out if I recenter myself and refocus on what's at hand that what's going to happen is going to happen, and I can't control it by worrying, it kind of helps me. I know it's different for different people, but if I realize that this whole entire situation is not entirely in my hands and if I allow myself to feel negative about it, it's not going to change the result. Okay. That's how I kind of work with that. Yeah. <laughs> I had my colon resection. They removed um, my ascending colon. Um, they took 29 lymph nodes, I think, but one of them all came back fine. One of them was inflamed, but they all came back fine. She recommended me to have genetic testing, which I kind of drug my feet about first, because <laughs> I was at a point where, wow, this just hit me. I don't even want to know if I have a risk for something else at that point. It was kind of hard for me to work through initially. Um, and she was waiting on my genetic testing and my tumor to come back. If my, I was diagnosed in the end of August or sorry, end, middle of August, and then I ended up having genetic testing in September of the following month. Um, my tumor, my genetic of my tumor did not come back until September either. Um, it came back, my tumor was MSI high, which kind of suggests that I have Lynch. Um, my oncologist was up in the air whether to do maintenance chemo or not. She, well, she wanted to do it because of my age, but I was also type one diabetic, and um, she wasn't sure how the MSI high was going to play into chemo. Um, turns out that it can be detrimental to Lynch patients for maintenance chemo for stage two. So she sent me, she brought my tumor to a tumor board, and then she sent me to another doctor who I got another second opinion with in October. At that point, they decided that I was most likely cancer-free and that they needed to be monitored strictly from point on. There are I think five different mutations that are attributed to Lynch. I just seen my second opinion the day before and I was pretty happy um, thinking that I was cancer free. I wasn't gonna hear have to hear the word cancer again. And the next day I got a phone call from the genetics department saying that I tested positive for the MLH1 mutation, which opened up a whole entire category of risk for 12 different cancers that I'm going to have to be monitored for. Endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, small bowel cancer, pancreatic cancer, brain cancer, um, urinary tract cancers, gastric cancer. I'm trying to think of them all right now. <laughs> the next day, I got a phone call from a genetics department at the University of Michigan letting me know that I had a Lynch diagnosis. That was a slap in the face. I kind of felt like, yay, I was so elated, happy one day, and the next day it was like someone pulled the rug from my feet and smacked me in the face because I'm never going to escape the cancer world, you know. I kind of had a really hard time with that one. I, I was kind of mad about it, actually, at first. We went through colon cancer. We, we, it, we, it turned out very positive for us, and then we found out that I had lunch, and not only that, now my sons have a 50% chance of having one. So that was a big thing to swallow for me. <laughs> the colon cancers grow very fast. Um, my GI said I probably had cancer for a year, one to two years before it was found it at stage two. Like it just started as opposed to five or 10 years, I think it is, for the general population of public. They took out my ascending colon and reattached it, reattached my colon together. The prep was actually kind of like a colonoscopy, um, except I just had to drink two bottles of magnesium citrate and be on a liquid diet. I think the surgery lasted two hours. I might be mistaken. I can't remember, but it wasn't very long. 
as opposed to a lot of them. Um, so they weren't sure when I went in for the surgery if I was going to wake up with an ostomy or not. How do I want to describe it? It's, uh, it's like a, it's a bag where they have to put your colon through your skin in order to relieve yourself of your stool. So they weren't sure if they were going to be able to reconnect my colon at that time and said that I may have to have an ostomy. Um, but as surgery had went, they were able to reconnect it without any tissues dying or anything. So I didn't have a bag when I woke up. Um, at that point, that really, I didn't even really care if I had one or not. Um, when you have to weigh things about surviving and cancer, it kind of, you know, I don't know. I, I did, it, didn't, it didn't bother me if I would have woken up with one, to be honest. <laughs> I had to end up had to end up staying one additional night from when they were gonna let me go home because I had bloody diarrhea. Um, I had to make sure that my bowels are still functioning well. Um, I had to make sure that everything was mostly returning to normal. Obviously, it's not gonna return to normal right after major surgery immediately, but they had to make sure my systems were working correctly and everything was under control. I was having rectal bleeding with diarrhea, so they had they kept me for one more night just to make sure it wasn't a bigger issue than it could have been. Well, as far as recovery time, I think it was about a week. About after a week, I was able to really get up and really start doing things. Um, I would get up for a little bit, but I was really tired after the surgery, and that's, I think that's a good point to make is that you need, you need to let yourself heal sometimes. Um, even though your mind may be saying, you know, you got to get back to normal, you have to do this. But sometimes it's good just to give your mind a rest and just relax. <laughs> they did a body scan six months later just to make sure that nothing had started again. Um, and then that came back, there was this spot on my liver. You know, I had asked her about PET scans before, and she said something about how they wouldn't. What she needed to see in my tissues wouldn't show up on a PET scan. So she always sends me for CTs. Gave me contrast to drink for, I don't know how long it, like an hour or something, I have to drink it over. And then chest CT and abdominal CT and a pelvis CT, which is just to sit in a tube and it takes about, I don't know, a minute, a minute and a half, go through a tube and come back out. There was a lot. I just had a, I had never heard of Lynch before. And I'd have to have a yearly colonoscopy for the rest of my life because I have a high risk of recurrence now. Um, and then on top of that, I have a higher risk of developing a second cancer within 15 years of my first diagnosis. For different medical professionals, they have different opinions on how Lynch, how monitoring Lynch should be. Um, so her and I are in the talks of right now of maybe having a yearly, a yearly MRI after the body scans, because I'm going on year five right now. We're kind of figuring it out as we go when it comes to Lynch. <laughs> so, okay. um, yeah, but there's a lot of additional monitoring on top of colonoscopies and um, things like that. <laughs> Very important to keep up with your Lynch screenings. Um, it, there are a lot of screenings and it's sometimes it feels like a full-time job because I have them now scheduled to where they're all at the same time during the year. Um, but if you don't keep up with them, um, the chances of developing a cancer are, I mean, good, I guess. When I was diagnosed with cancer, a lot of people who were cancer survivors, some that I knew were, some that I didn't know, gave me some advice. And one of them really stuck with me through cancer and then through other things that I've gone through since then. And one of them was take everything a second by a second. And then when you can move to a minute, take everything by the minute and then the five minutes and then move on to an hour and you'll eventually get through and it'll be easier for you to deal with. So at first I was just overwhelmed with all, not even just the cancer, but all of this knowledge that was being thrown at me left and right about what I should do, what I might not be able to do as far as treatments goes. and genetics and it was just this whole entire world that blindsided me but I didn't even know it existed at that point. So I just would relax, take whatever I knew at the minute, hold in for a minute, move to the next minute. And these little 
increments of time ended up being, you know, longer and longer and longer. And I found myself, okay, I can get through this day. I went through the day before. That is the best advice that I was given during all of this. I'd like to say that we aren't alone. There are there's a world full of wonderful people out there to help you through emotionally, physically. It may feel like it and it may feel like the world's crashing down, but there is so much support out there for you. Um, take it one second at a time until you can move on to a minute at a time. It's just, <laughs> there's so much love. That's all, I mean, cancer world's horrible. A diagnosis is horrible. There's so much love out there and there's so much support out there.